Now we're talking to Christian Brockoff from uh, CarMD.com about the report of the health index for vehicles in 2015. How are you, Christian? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much again for, for doing this. Uh, we've done it for a few times now, I think. And uh, I think for the first time for I'm seeing, it's like good news that the prices went down. What's that? <laughs> A little bit, the, uh, well, the average car repair uh, cost was pretty much flat, which since we, since CarMD has been tracking it, uh, really hasn't happened. So it's nice to see that uh, we're holding steady and not paying any more for car repairs. And uh, hybrids, actually, uh, in most cases, the repairs went down. So uh, all good news. And uh, do you have any data in uh, for the reasons? Oh, absolutely. I mean, CarMD tracks all sorts of data. We are experts when it comes to your check engine light. And I think the most important thing is that our data this year shows that it's much, much uh, more likely to be a simple, sometimes even free repair when your check engine light goes on than something very serious and costly. In fact, 5% of check engine light problems last year were completely free to fix. Whether you did it yourself or went to your mechanic, it cost nothing. Um, wow. So we just want to encourage people not to be afraid of that check engine light because it might just be something simple. Um, but any way you look at it, it's, it's potentially going to hurt your gas mileage if you ignore it. Yeah, absolutely. But then you also need like the honest mechanics, which I guess they're getting more honest because of technology like yours, right? They can... Well, they know, they know that consumers are pretty smart these days and that with data like what CarMD offers and uh, a lot of information and tools out there, it's, it's easy for people to diagnose their cars so, you know, they can hold their, their technicians to a higher standard and I think we're seeing that most people are very fair when it comes to uh, repairing cars. Um, parts costs were down uh, almost 3% and labor costs were up just a little bit. but. You know, when something is difficult to fix, like a like a transmission on an older car, it takes them a little bit longer. Yeah. So you really can't can't fault the mechanics for that. No, I know, but uh, I mean, it's it's <laughs> good to have like good news in that sense too. Like mechanics are getting up with technology. I guess technology is catching up with that, and there's really no place to hide it nowadays. So uh, even though the prices went slightly down uh, for 2014, I mean, it's still pretty pretty uh, costly, like three hundred and ninety dollars. Uh, Average cost in 2014? Yes. The, yeah, the average price for across the U.S. is 392 when the check engine light comes on, but that's everything. So that's, uh, you know, anything that can potentially go wrong. One of the more expensive things is a catalytic converter. Um, it doesn't normally fail unless your car is 9, 10, 11 years old or you've ignored something for too long. That's why we encourage folks to get their cars looked at. Um, the most common thing that goes wrong is called an oxygen sensor on your car. It's about $250, $260 to repair, uh, but if you ignore that, it can hurt your gas mileage uh, by as much as 40%. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, the longer you ignore something, the more likely it is uh, that it's going to cause additional things to go wrong with your car. Yeah. Um, so that's why we encourage people to get it fixed. And then, you know, something else that I find very interesting is we're having a lot of weather extremes uh, across the country. Okay, yeah. Whether, you know, you've got up in, up in the, uh, the east and the midwest, very, very cold, and then, you know, very hot in the south and the west. Um, and we're seeing certain things like replace thermostat and replace fuel injectors and things that may be susceptible to, to heat and the temperature you're driving in. Um, so we just encourage people to potentially realize that they may need to get other repairs done that you wouldn't normally think of. Um, and then something else um, is the type of gasoline that you put in your car yeah. um, can potentially, you know, wreak havoc on your fuel tank and cause other things like a fuel injector to need to be replaced sooner. So when you fill up that tank at the cheap gas station, it may not necessarily be good for you in the long run. So you might be saving a few cents here, but in the long run you're going <laughs> to have to replace a, a different parts in your engine. So the gas cap recent for the light up uh, and the check engine thing, I mean, has gone like dramatically down, right? I mean, it used to be one of the main reasons now, I, guess, I mean, in the past. Yeah, when CarMD first started looking at uh, a, a loose or a damaged gas cap was the number one reason uh, that your check engine light went on. Uh, now it's dropped to number three, and uh, 
no, shops really aren't charging to diagnose that anymore. Uh, usually the only time that you usually have to pay for a gas cap related problem is if it's stolen or damaged yeah. or you left it somewhere and then it normally costs you about 30 bucks to replace uh, that part. Yeah, and uh, the other uh, interesting part uh, of uh, what costs to repair a car, it depends where you live, right? I mean, I think the West Coast, you guys get it uh, much more expensive than uh, we do here in the East Coast. Uh, yes, it, it definitely varies what you charge, what you pay for different things. Uh, West is the most expensive at 423 on average, and the Midwest is as low as like $375. So. Uh, It definitely, you know, pays the shop around and, you know, of course you're, you know, susceptible to where you live and what the repair shop pays for overhead and real estate and everything else. So yeah. um, you just have to be smart and shop around when it comes to parts. So does the report that CarMD puts together uh, includes um, services from cars at just dealerships or what kind of shops uh, are included in the study? CarMD has a database uh, that we've been building for, gosh, the last almost 20 years, and it's uh, anything reported to our network of, of mechanics from coast to coast, as well as people using our tools, um, and it's confirmed by a very high caliber group of technicians. We call them master technicians that make sure the fixes are, that are in there and the information that's in there is accurate. So CarMD is definitely an expert when it comes to helping people understand the check engine light and then uh, providing the industry and consumers with tools to help you save money when it comes to overall car maintenance and repairs. Yeah, so uh, now let's talk a little bit about the hybrid cars because, uh, I mean, they were very expensive to, I mean, in general, uh, compared to regular cars when they started coming out. So you have data from 2010 to 2014 in this report, and like, so there's also good news here, Dan. Yeah, um, unfortunately the cost of, the average cost of a hybrid battery uh, to replace went up a little bit. Um, you know, you can you can pay as much as three thousand dollars for wow. that in some cases. But the hybrid inverter assembly, which is another part that historically has been like crazy expensive, as much as seven thousand dollars, is now, you know, costing in the range of thirteen hundred to repair. Um, last year alone it came down about fifty percent in overall cost. So it's encouraging to see that as more people embrace the hybrid vehicles and there's more parts and people to service them, that it keeps coming down. So as people budget and decide whether or not the hybrid's going to pay for itself um, yeah. over the years, that's just one thing to keep in mind is it's going to just keep getting cheaper and cheaper to repair them. Yeah, like, like uh, it happens with all new technologies, right? I mean, they're first are like just to buy it, it's expensive and then like the whole process keeps going down. Do you have any reports on electric cars in this report? You know, we're just starting to get data on electric cars, and CarMD is very careful not to put it out data unless we feel that we have a big sampling. So it'll be another couple of years before we have good information on that, but you'll start to see us report on that as well. Yeah. Uh, so um, let's let's talk a little bit now about the oxygen sensor. The, the number one reason, and also very expensive because it can go into other things, right? Yeah, and that, the, the most common repair is an oxygen sensor. Um, your car can have several of them in one car, and uh, if you ignore that, it can it can snowball into other things um, like a catalytic converter. So when you again, you know, we just encourage people to get their car repaired and when that check engine light comes on to get it fixed as soon as possible. Also, a lot of people don't know that you won't pass your emissions test or your smog check as we call it on the West Coast. Um, if you have a check engine light on or you have like a pending problem hiding in your car and then that can cause you to be late on your registration and rack up a bunch of fees. So, you know, we just want, want to encourage people to stay ahead of repairs. Um, and not wait till the last minute. Yeah, and also when you are trying to resell your, your old car, I mean, that's not gonna sell at all, right? I mean, if I was gonna buy a, a used car, if that in, in, in light is on, I would like just walk away immediately. Yeah, and you know, it's funny though, because CarMD, we also sell a consumer tool, it's a little handheld device called the CarMD Vehicle Health System. And you can use that to inspect a used car and it'll tell you if it has a current or a hidden problem. 
But, you know, we encourage people to use it in their negotiations because what if it is just a loose gas cap or what if it is just an oxygen sensor? Maybe talk them down in price 200 bucks or so and, uh, and you know, go on from there. Um, but if it's something serious like a transmission or a catalytic converter or an engine type problem, um, you know, then you may want to reconsider buying that car. So how does this device work? Uh, and, uh, and can you use it in several cars? Is it just like unique for one car or what, how is that? Uh, no, the Car MD device that we sell can be used in any car 1996 to newer. So that's about 90% of the cars on the road today. Yeah. Uh, and you just plug it in under the dash and turn the ignition and it works and it tells you with a green, yellow, red light if there's anything wrong with the car. And then if there is, you can plug it into your computer and get more information about what's wrong and what the repairs will cost. Um, you can use that. To I, I'm check. sorry, I'm sorry, how do you mean like plug in your computer, like to the car or does it come with the key? No, or what? Um, it takes the information from your car's computer and then you can actually attach it with a little cable, a USB cable to oh, okay. your own personal computer. And it'll give you a report that tells you more about what's going on with that car's health. Um, you can run reports and register up to three cars, and then you can use the tool to, to, for unlimited use. And it's got um, LEDs that tell you if there's any problems. So, like if you were out shopping for a used car, you could use it on every car you're looking at, and then you only would need to plug it in and register that vehicle if you're serious about buying it or you, know, you really want to know what that problem oh, okay. is. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much again, Kristen. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye, Javier. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. Thank you.